So yeah, in this session, if you want to open the file, um, we're working with uh, number two slash graphics slash data manipulation dot rmd. Um, so this is another file, um, and this is going to have some more R code that's going to explore, in particular, first uh, graphics. Uh, so that's a very common task, obviously, that you're going to be doing with pretty much any project. Um, and then um, looking at uh, some data manipulation tools in R. So I'm just going to load these um, four lines here. Um, it's going to load some data sets for me. Um, so I'm going to be illustrating graphics using this um, C survey file, which is just um, some survey data which we've looked at before, um, and it's the cleaned version. Just if you're curious, you can run a whole code chunk here by going to codes um, run current chunk. That's a nice little trick as well. So that will run all the code in that little code chunk. Okay, so let's talk about uh, graphics in R. There are three core graphics systems in R. There's base graphics, lattice, and ggplot2. Base is what's built into R, um, and it creates traditional, um, very traditional looking kind of statistics graphs. Uh, interestingly, not by definition, but base graphics tend to be basic graphics. They're kind of the kind of basic graphics you'd see in a journal article and so on. Lattice is a newer add-on package. It's still been around for a long time, and it often comes with R pre-installed, but it is an additional um, package. Uh, and it basically uh, does a lot of things like base graphics, but it's based on um, a kind of uh, trellis or latticing framework where you can facet plots in different ways. So break, break it down by gender or break it down by um, ID. I'll show you some examples. ggplot2 is the newest system. This is one of Hadley Wickham's packages, and it's one of the um, it's very uh, kind of sexy and popular topic, uh, popular graphing tool, and um, yeah, uh, it's based on the concept of grammar of graphics. It's very powerful, and it creates very nice plots by default. And really, it's it's a very different approach to creating graphs, but it can actually be um, you know very powerful. Anyway, I'll start by looking at base graphics just to give you a feel. Um, in terms of base graphics, if you go to uh, the R reference card, you will probably see a section on plotting um, in here somewhere that you can that can help to guide you. So under plotting, you can see a lot of basic plotting functions like plot and bar plot and histogram. Um, and then later on, you see kind of ways of adding lines and text. Um, onto things and various graphical parameters which can be used to modify the particular size of text or um, the color of some symbol or the type of symbol and all that little low-level stuff. The metaphor of base graphics is like painting. Uh, there are some basic plots but you can also then overlay lines or uh, additional text and so on. But let's look at probably the most uh, the, the most fundamental command and that's plot. Uh, plot can be used in a variety of ways, most commonly to create a scatter plot of two variables. So if I have the, the pulse of someone and their age, I can get a plot of that. So let's might just go one smaller, hopefully that's still readable for people, but just to give me a bit of space in this graphics window. Um, you can also use formula notation, and we'll talk about that more when we look at regression, but the basic idea is that the tilde is kind of like um, predicted by, you could replace with that, so age predicted by pulse. Um, and then you put the data set over here, so C survey is a data frame, and I'm saying age predicted by pulse, so that plots age by pulse. Uh, you can also plot individual variables. Not that useful, but maybe for a time series it might be useful. Sometimes you want to have a look at the distribution of a variable, so you've got the hist for histogram. You can even get a plain old stem and leaf plot. Uh, you've got a box plot function, 
So that's showing the medians and the interquartile ranges um, and so on. Uh, you can even uh, use box plot by group. So see it by male and female. You can get plots for categorical or string variables. So uh, that just shows frequencies. Um, and you can also get proportions as well using that function. If you want to see a nice um, scatter plot matrix um, of like a number of numeric variables, then you can use the pairs function. So that's got four um, numeric variables and it's showing the covariation of each pair. So height with age is plotted in this cell. I really like the um, pairs.panels function in the psych package. Um, it not only gives you the scatter plot for every pair of variables, uh, it also gives you a trend line and it also shows, also shows the Pearson correlation between each pair of variables. So the length of the writing hand is correlated with the height, 0.65. So that's quite nice. You can intersperse a range of um, graphics parameters. And they're, all, they're a bit obscure and they take a while to learn, but certainly the cheat sheet helps a lot. And you can also sort of auto-complete um, by tabbing the arguments. So for example, this is modifying the x label, x-axis label, the y-axis label, uh, the plotting character. So instead of using circles, it uses, um, if you can see it here, one is an open circle, two is a triangle, three is a plus. So do that, uh, changes the line orientation or the, 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 the orientation of the labels on the axis and the x and y limits. So that's just modified the graph a little bit. Here comes the painting metaphor. You can overlay a title with the um, title function or you could add particular sort of lines, either a horizontal line or a vertical line. And notice I've added arguments for like line type or color, and all those little parameters are sort of listed in the cheat sheet. Or you could add the text to a particular x, y position. So that's the painting me me metaphor. You can sort of overlay plots and with various elements. And you can learn more about the fiddly little parameters with um, the par param uh, question mark par. It describes a lot of the main ones and a few other things. Another nice feature is you can arrange plots in grids using this par mf row argument. So this would arrange it into two, two rows and two columns. So if I run that once, I can then plot, 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 and there, there. well, if you had a lower screen resolution, that might look nice. Um, also, RStudio makes plotting uh, a lot nicer. So in the plotting window, you can navigate back and forward to see previous plots. Uh, you can export a plot, so copy to the clipboard, you know, and paste it into Word. Whiz bang, there you go. Um, and you can also clear that whole thing if you want, and then it's all fresh. In general, if you want to save a plot, which presumably you, know, you want to incorporate it into a report, it's a little bit different than what you might be familiar with, like Save As. I mean, you can use um, RStudio, as I just showed you, but the coding way to save a plot involves using devices, graphics devices. There is pretty much one device for each kind of file format, you know, PDF, bitmap, PNG, JPEG, and so on. The general idea is you activate a graphics device like PDF with a file name. So I'm going to save a, a subsequent plot with the name out into the output folder called height histogram. You run that, nothing happens. But what does happen is that when you try and plot something like the, the histogram of height, you don't see it in the plotting window. Instead, the plot has been written to that file. When you're finished, you, you run device off. And, well, has anything happened? Well, if we go to File, Output, 
height histogram, we'll see that yes, we've saved that PDF image. So it's a little bit different to the kind of save as thing. You can use that for RStudio, but if you're using code, you run the device command with a file name, you run the plot, and then you say turn off the device. And um, that will save the plot to, to a file, which you can then drag and drop into your Word document or incorporate into some other document system. So yeah, we've just got a little exercise now um, using base graphics. So yeah, perhaps give that a go and um, yeah, we'll then have a look at um, uh, Lattice and uh, ggplot. I'll just briefly highlight how Lattice graphics works. So it's an external package, so often you'll need to load it if it's not auto-loading with um, library Lattice. And um, I'll, I'll use this C survey package again to highlight it. Generally, um, Lattice uses this formula notation, which we'll get into more when we talk about regression. It's this idea of predicting something by something else using this tilde operation. The standard sort of equivalent to plot is what's called xy plot. So this, this is for scatter plots and variance on scatter plots. So the general idea is, you know, this is a this is one variable predicted by another using the C survey data frame. So that shows us a scatter plot, as, as we might expect. But a nice thing with Lattice is you can easily um, what they might call facet the plot, or show different aspects of it, you know, break it down by different groups. So here's it broken down by gender, uh, and so you get this nice you know, breakdown of the relationship between two variables, but at, at the levels of two other variables. And the, the nice thing is that the uh, axis limits are identical for both plots, so you can sort of do some nice comparisons across. Uh, or you can do it for two different categoricals using the plus symbol on the, on the other side of this um, bar. So there we've got it broken down by preferred hand and, and gender. Uh, that said, uh, X, uh, Lattice does have a range of other kind of um, plotting functions that sort of over, <coughs> overlap with base graphics and their sort of functionality. Um, I think, uh, yeah, there's, most of these Lattice plots are listed in this um, help file, like you've got xy plot, bar chart, dot plot, density plot, etc. And they all tend to use this sort of formula notation. Um, just a one little tip, if you are saving lattice plots, you do need to print the plot. For whatever reason, it's not enough just to run xy plot between the PDF and the dev.off, you need to surround it in print. Yeah, don't know why, but that's what you have to do. Alright, now let's have a look at ggplot2 um, briefly. I really think ggplot2 is, uh, is what I use for a lot of uh, the graphics that I you know, create for journal articles. I think they're, they're really quite nice. Um, it's another external package which you need to load and, and um, you know, install and load. Um, I've given you a cheat sheet uh, from the RStudio help site um, which uh, shows you, in, in a really nice way, once you get your head around it, it's a really good reference sheet um, for, uh, for working with ggplot. Uh, so it really talks about the basics of setting up a ggplot with a data frame and various uh, aesthetics, uh, and then the common kind of plots you'd use. So it's, once you get your kind of head around it, you can rely on this to, um, you know, uh, keep you moving. All right, so I'm going to look at some um, data from on Australian athletes. It's got some blood counts and body mass index and a few things like that. Um, so the basic function for ggplot2 is the ggplot function. The first argument is a data frame, so data set, in this case we've got the sports data. And then uh, the idea is that you map variables from that data frame to aesthetic attributes of the plot. So I'm going to map height to the X attribute and weight to the Y attribute of the plot. And you do that using this AES, it's short for aesthetic. So you're mapping a, a data feature to a, an aesthetic feature of the plot. Now by default that won't do anything, that's always the starting point, 
And then you add one of these geoms, geometric objects, I guess. Um, standard one being a geom underscore point. So if we do that, that gives us a scatter plot. Um, so this is kind of a, a slightly non-standard notation, but um, it's it's pretty smart once you get used to it. So the idea is you have the first bit, and then you add the geoms you want. So here we can add a, a, a geometric smoother. So that's adding a um, a fit line. I've also added an attribute that does uh, males and females separately by color. And then there's all sort of standard functions for labels, um, access labels and so on. If you want to save a um, ggplot2 graphic, it's quite straightforward. You just run ggsave and it will save the last um, plot that you created. So there's lots of functions in ggplot2, lots of types of graphics, pretty much anything you can think of. Um, and you can also save the graphics as objects. So here I'm saving the first bit of the graphic uh, in, a, in a variable called p, which doesn't actually do anything, but when I combine it with a geom, like a geom underscore histogram, get a histogram. Or with a, a density plot, you get a density plot. And if you can't remember your geoms, um, geom underscore, then hopefully it will co-complete to a whole range of things that you might want to graph or do, do, do to your graph. The general logic of ggplot is to give you a language for creating graphics. Uh, it's meant to be, this concept of grammar of graphics is what the gg stands for. So it's like a, it's like a, a language for describing graphics. Um, and so, yeah, once you get used to it, it's quite um, consistent internally. So here we're creating a box plot um, of um, BMIs by sport. So the, def the default um, is it, the defaults are quite nice. Um, this was just an example of uh, the equivalent of the scatterplot matrix in Grammar of Graphics or Digiplot um, that use an external library. So in general, I think ggplot2 is quite well worth using. Um, it's got its own kind of conventions for writing, but uh, there's a lot of support. Um, and I think if you go to um, the manual for ggplot, um, you'll find that it's actually quite well documented. So if you're wondering what, what geom.point looks like, it's got all the arguments, and then there's heaps of little example plots that you, know, you could then <coughs> modify the code to do something particular. And there'll be equivalent things for box plots and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's pretty cool ggplot. I think it actually creates graphs that you could probably show to a, um, dare I say, a business client, let alone um, a scientific audience, which is often more about readability. Often in consulting worlds, they quite like a bit of um, color and flash, and that sort of stuff. So I think, I think ggplot is quite a nice option if you don't want to just show kind of the straight scientific stuff, but you want to have a good quality graph that actually looks relatively nice as well. All right, so that's graphics. As I say, there's three three systems. They kind of overlap in what they do. Personally, I, I often use base graphics just for kind of my own internal purposes. I want to get a quick scatter plot of some residuals or just have a quick look at a histogram. You know, you've got a very quick function. Whereas if I want to create a nice, pretty plot for a report, I might go to ggplot um, to do stuff there. Um, but you know, it's whatever works and whatever works for your audience.